So in this episode of Coding with Noah, we're going to learn how to make funky circles with P5.js. And P5.js is a drawing library for JavaScript. What happens is when I click on uh, the canvas, it makes a circle that changes every second or every 0.2 seconds, I'm sorry, <laughs> and uh, changes like to a random color. So you kind of create these funky effects with uh, the circle. And then uh, if I want to save it, I can just press the S key. That'll save my funky circle. And let me see if I can bring that in. I don't think I can. Let me make this a little bit smaller. So you can see it saved it. So this is what it looks like right here. And uh, you can also clear the circles by uh, clicking on the C key. So S to save and C to, uh, to clear. So yeah, with all that being said, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and delete all this. And we're going to uh, figure out how to, in P5 how to do a uh, video capture. So video, yeah, video capture or video HTML, basically. And if you do that, it's basically this link right here. And I'll have a link to this in the video. And you got to click allow. You, you, you'll, you, you'll have to click allow, but you can see... Uh, captures the video like so and this is the invert feature so if I copy this and then paste this into the editor I should see the same thing if I hide it I won't see me so that's invert and you can explore the filters so the filter is what's causing this um, so if I google p5 filter and I think it's the first one you can see all the filters the one that I found that was pretty cool was this posterize so I'll show you that one and let's see it should yeah there you go so you can like change it to four and you can see the effects and I thought that was pretty cool but there's all sorts of filters and that you can do do uh, let's see a road maybe a road will be cool oops a road let's try that and yeah so a little bit of erosion I can see I wonder if I can pass in a number here yeah so maybe if I pass in 10 like it'll really erode yeah that's a little goofy but that's pretty cool so I'm not gonna do any filters for this project I am gonna change the size so I want this to be 480 by now I want this to be, yeah, I think it's 640 by 480. So I'm going to do that for all these sizes. So it's going to capture that size, and it's also going to uh, display that. So now I've got this image right here. So I've got the selfie part of the app done, which is pretty cool. We don't need this background, I don't think, do we? Let's see. Yeah, we don't need the background because we're not. That sets the uh, background color. We're not. We're using uh, the camera for that. So that's pretty cool. We've got that going. The next thing we need to do is we need a mouse press. So whenever we click the uh, mouse button, we want to uh, respond uh, with a circle, and we also want to draw a uh, kind of like a circle when we move the mouse. So let's actually start with that. So the way you do that is you just use the circle function and all these are documented right here. So if you're ever confused, you can just type in circle into P5 and it'll take you right here. So and you can see they've got this really clear documentation. So X, Y, and the diameter. So we'll just say circle is going to be mouse X. So mouse X is the mouse, posi mouse X position. And this is the mouse Y position. And then we'll say 10 for the diameter. And that should give me like a white circle. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Well, it was, uh, yeah, I think now it's working. So 10's a little small, so I'm going to say 20. Let's see. There we go. And mouse X and mouse Y is the mouse position. Now, one thing I should have said is that the setup function only runs once and the draw function runs over and over again. So if you're new to P5, that's what's happening. So if I do a console.log and I say once... You can see that runs once, so I'll move that up a little bit, and then you can see this console.log, and I'll just say draw, and you can see draw is going to run a whole bunch of times. 
So it's like 25 times, 30 times, but I think it's running like 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, something like that. So 60 or 30 times a second. So that's pretty cool. So now that we have that going, we want to respond to mouse click. So when we do a mouse click, we want to uh, draw a circle. So you can look for click and there is this mouse clicked function. Uh, let's see what that does. Well, that's for uh, Canvas. It's actually an easier way of doing this is mouse pressed, which is you just need to create the function. So we can just copy this. And you can see mouse press is a function that's called after every time the mouse button is pressed over an element. So this might not work for mobile, but don't really care about mobile right now. So I'm going to make this a little bit, make this console a little bit smaller. And we can just console.log just to make sure this is working. Clicked. Something simple just to test it out. And yeah, that's working. So that's good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a list of circles that we need to draw when the mouse is clicked. So I'm going to say let circles equal um, an empty list. Now you could say var. So if let confuses you, you can just replace it with var. There, there are some differences, but for this tutorial, it doesn't really matter. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a circle to the list every time we click on the mouse. And a circle right now is just going to contain the X and the Y value. And later on, we'll add other values. So the object for the circle will contain the X and the Y value. So we'll say circles.push. And then we'll pass the object directly in. So we'll say mouse X, because we know that's the mouse X position, and mouse Y, which is the mouse Y position. So now when we uh, click, we should see uh, circles. So let's just test that out. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to click. And we should see an X and a Y, and we do. So that's good. So if I click again, I see two objects. And let's just, yeah. So that looks good, and that looks good. So it looks like we're saving the circles we need to draw. So let's create a draw circle function. So we're going to say function draw circle. And this function will take in a circle object. But to make it easy on ourselves, we'll just use some destructuring. So x and y. So basically what this will do is allow us just to directly access the x and y value inside the uh, circle object without typing it. So that's what that funky syntax does, but it's super convenient. So now what we can do is we can just use our circle function. So we can say circle x, y, and we'll just say the size of the circle right now is 20, just to be consistent. And what we can do is every time we call draw, which we'll just draw all the circles. So we'll say circles dot for each, and we'll just pass in our draw circle function. Let's go ahead and camel case it just so it's easier to read. And let's see if that works. Hopefully that does. Wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't, but we'll test it out. So it looks like I'm able to draw these little circles. So that's cool. I can draw one right here and right here. Now, one thing that would be annoying is if we couldn't clear the circles and saw that in the demo so let's do that as well so I'm gonna say function um, key press so I'm getting a little ahead of myself because just to show you what key pressed is so key pressed you can see it's a function that's called every time a key is pressed and the key thing to note here is that there's a key code variable built in and this will be a, a number so what we'll do is we'll say console.log key code and that will give us the um, code that for the key that's being pressed and that will make more sense once you see it so I'm going to press C and C looks like 67 let's confirm that again so that looks right so we can just write a simple if so we can say if key code equals 67 then we want to say circles set circles to an empty list, which will basically clear off all the circles because it won't for each through all the circles. So now if I press C, they all go away. So that's looking really good. Um, so we got our clear, we got our draw circle. 
Um, one thing that would be cool is if we had a random size for all these circles. So to do that, uh, we'll just add a size property to this and we'll say random, which is a, another P5 function. And we'll say between like five to 300 for the random size. And then what's cool is I can just do this and then pass in size. So now this will create a ran randomly sized circles. Let's give it a second. So you can see they're randomly sized. So that's pretty cool, but we still aren't quite there yet. It'd be really cool to get random colors as well. So let's do that. I'm gonna, I just press C to clear off all those circles. So the way we can do random colors is we can use the uh, color function in P5, which is right here, and this will create a random color. So let's do that. So we'll say color, we'll say let C equal color, and we'll just do a random color. So we can say, just to make this clear, we can do is we can say let red equal random zero to 255, let green equal random zero to 255, and then we'll say let blue equal random zero to 255, and then we'll just pass all those in, red, green, and blue. So we're just creating random numbers and creating the color. And we can't use color here because otherwise we'd override the color function up here. So we'll just say C and we'll just pass it in like that. So if you, the key and the name of the variable match, you just have to pass in C. So now I can just say C right here and I can use the fill property on C. And let's see what that does. Oops, let's see. So. That is creating a random color. And that's kind of a cool effect because you can see the, um, the uh, mouse, it's no longer just a white circle. Now, if we wanted it, I kind of like that effect, so I'm gonna keep it. But if you wanted it to be uh, a white circle no matter what, you could just use the fill up here. So you could say fill before circle, and you could just pass in white, and that would, oops, not wild, but white, and that would do it. So if I so let me see, so you can see it's white. I kind of like that, like the last color is being displayed, so I'm gonna keep that. It's kind of a happy accident, so that's pretty cool. The other thing cool that you can do with colors is you can set alpha. So if I Google, or if I P5 set alpha, um, you can see right here, um, yeah, so this is just a random number, or a number between zero to 255, and the higher the number, the less transparent it is. So we can add some transparency to this too. So if we go here, we can say c.setAlpha, and we can say random between, I'm gonna say between 100 to 200. We'll see what that looks like. So it should be a little bit more see-through. So that's pretty cool. So you can see through me now. <laughs> so I'm liking this. Um, so you can kind of still see me, but not really. So, so that's fun. Um, so that's cool. So we got our uh, color stuff working and we're drawing our circle to a random size. But one thing that would be really cool, and we did this in the demo, is if the circles were changing colors. So the easy way to do that is just to set it to a random color every time we draw the circle. So we could just move this code as an example up to here. So take out the C and then do this. Let's see if that compiles. So now, oops. Oh yeah, so we'd also have to copy uh, our red, green, and blue as well so that that's a little error because we don't have red, green, and blue. So now that should work. But you can see it just flashes like way too much. So I don't, I don't really like that. And I don't think it's kind to the eye. So we're not going to do that. What we will do is, 
is every second or every fifth of a second will um, will change the color. So let's do that. And let's also, um, yeah, so let's do that. So I'm going to create a variable up here called let time to change ms for milliseconds or time to change seconds. And let's just set that to 0 0.2. Then we create another variable called let next it's called change color time. And what we're going to do is we're going to use date. Um, I think it's new date dot now plus 1000 times 0.2. Or not point two, but time to change seconds. So let's do that. It looks like there's an error. So let's Google now. I think I did that wrong. So JavaScript date now. So yeah, it looks like I was here before. Yeah, so you just have to do that. You don't have to do new. So that's my fault. Which means I don't need this parenthesis or that parenthesis. And let's see what else I did that was wrong. Oh, no big deal. So mistakes will happen. I think it's important to show the mistakes. Let's see. Oh, okay. So let's so maybe add a zero here, maybe that'll make it go away. Okay, so now we have the next time to change, and we're gonna change every 0.2 seconds. So that just makes it easy to adjust. So what we can do is we can go to our draw, and we can say if time, change color time is less than um this right here this date dot now so in other words um the date the current time is greater than the time to change we're going to say time to change equals and we'll go ahead and put this into a function so we'll say function set new time to change just so we don't um just so we get in the practice of it. And we'll go here. And we'll just copy this right here. And we'll put that into here. And then we'll just call this in the setup function so that we have it. So we'll say setup. Oops. We'll copy that function. So that way we don't have to duplicate our logic. This is just going to make it easier. And we always want to change it every time we change the color. So we just want to add to this time so we're not constantly changing the colors. So that looks good. Let's just make sure everything's working. So we always want to do that before we add a bunch of code. So now what we can do is we can say circles equals circles.map. And we can say C and we'll just use a fat arrow function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna return an object, basically our circle object. And we're gonna say x equals c dot x, y equals c dot y, and size equals c dot size. And I would do the deconstructor, but I don't have the, um, the, what you might call it the uh, compiler the like a build process for this so that's why I'm not we move this down a little bit and what we want to do is we want to create the random color so I'm trying to find out where we're doing that right here so this isn't going to be too bad because we can just isolate this into its own function as well so anytime there's duplication I just create a function so I'm going to say create color and then I can just say return C and that will create the color. And then we can say C equals create color. And that'll create a random color. 
And then what we can do is we can say C equals create color. And hopefully that works. So we'll semicolon that. And in theory, every 0.2 seconds, it should change a color. So it doesn't look like it's doing that. So that's not good. So let's see. So we know that's working. My guess is that we're probably not hitting this for some reason. So let's console.log right here. And we'll say hit. And this is okay. Let me move this up a little bit. So it is hitting it. Hits it once. But does it hit it again? So let's see. That's console.log. Just to make sure change color time. And change color time equals undefined. And that's because we are setting it in the function. So actually, this isn't a good practice. Better practice would be just to return this so that it's, uh, so it doesn't have side effects, meaning that it doesn't affect things outside of the function. So we can say get new time to change or time to change. That might even be better. So now we can go up here and we can say time to change equals this right here and then we can go right here and do that oops and let's go ahead and console let's delete that oops delete the first console.log if I can do that <laughs> sorry about that and we'll go right here and we'll delete this because that'll cause confusion too and let's see if that works so yeah, every 0.2 seconds it is changing. So that's looking pretty cool. I'm liking this. So you can kind of see the uh, funky effect that's going on. I'll s see that to uh, make it go away. So you can play around with these numbers. The last thing we need to um, figure out is the uh, is how to save. So that's pretty easy too. I'm just going to do console.log and then key code and then I'll do another key code right here and let's see what that equals so when we press the S key we want to save so I press S so that's 83 that's pretty easy so what we can do is we can say if key code equals 83 and I think it's just say save let's see if there's a save canvas function that looks promising yeah, that's pretty easy to use. So we can just use this. <laughs> so we'll just copy that in. And instead of canvas, we'll say funky circle. And you can use a JPEG. I'm going to use a PNG because I think that's more popular uh, for web. Um, and let's try that. And then I'm going to press S. And it looks like it's saved into, yeah. So it looks like it's saved. So I'm going to open that up. Um, I'll make this a little bit bigger or smaller and open that up. And you can see it uh, saved right here. So <laughs> it's kind of a funny picture. So that's cool. So that's uh, Funky Circles. Um, I'd encourage you to play with this. It's a fun library. Uh, I don't know if it gets used professionally too much, but it is a fun library and it's a fun way to learn uh, JavaScript. So keep playing around with it. Let me know what improvements you make to this and uh, I will catch you in the next section. If there's any JavaScript libraries or things uh, that you want me to cover, uh, please let me know and any feedback you all have, uh, definitely appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next uh, video.